Hi everyone, welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and watching another video. So in today's video, I wanna talk about organization. I think in a different life, if I didn't do what I do for work, I would be a professional organizer. I love organizing. It's not only like the act of organizing that I like, like there is something very calming about like putting something in order, but I also just love living in an organized space. I feel like it's a huge contributor to being able to think clearly, to be calm, to reduce stress. But I also know that not everybody feels the way I feel about organizing. I think it's one of those things that either like you like to do and comes really easily to you or it doesn't. So in today's video, I want to share with you nine tips for an organized home. All right, with all that said, let's dive in. My first tip is to group like items together. And this might seem sort of like entry level into organization, but I find that it's something that not a lot of people do. And what I mean by group like items together is that if you have something like coats, keeping all of your coats and jackets in one place, not like some of them in the bedroom closet and some of them in the mud room and some of them in a linen closet, like put all your coats in one place. Not only is this gonna help you find things when you're looking for them, but it's also gonna give you a better sense of your inventory. Like how many coats do you actually have? How many do you wear out of that? And how many do you need? I feel like another good example of this is cords. I feel like we all have so many phone chargers and USB cables and HDMI cables. Like it's hard to keep track of all of the cords we have. But if you keep all of those in one place, you'll have a better sense of like, oh, I actually have four phone chargers. Like, do I actually need four phone chargers? So grouping like items together and designating one spot for those items is not only a great way to stay organized, but a way to stay on top of your inventory. My second tip is to use containers everywhere. Adding a container to a cabinet or a drawer is a really simple way to add a little bit of organization to what can otherwise be a chaotic space. It provides not only a container for the items, but a barrier to keep certain items together, whether that be like items or items you use all at one time. It keeps things from sliding around in a drawer or moving around in a cabinet, and it can just be a little bit more visually pleasing to look at something when it's contained together. And I feel like there's an increasing number of items out there that are made from things like paper and wood and natural fibers and cotton. So when you think of a container, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be something plastic and you don't necessarily need to buy something new specifically as a container to organize. I feel like all of us get things delivered to our homes. We probably all have some cardboard boxes that we could save. If you fold the side flaps in on a cardboard box, it can make an excellent container. Things like old glass jars make really good containers. Shoe boxes, both the actual box and the lid. There's a lot of great ways where we can reuse some of the items that we get in our homes all the time. And if you don't like the look of it, you can always like wrap the box in fabric, you could paint it. There's a lot of ways to take old things and revamp them so that they feel aesthetically pleasing in your home as well. My next organization tip is to declutter first. So before you embark on organizing anything or purchasing containers or creating containers for your stuff, I definitely recommend that you go through the declutter process first. And I know I'm guilty of this too, being like, I'm going to organize this space. I'm gonna get my life together and I go out and buy a bunch of organization containers, but then I end up decluttering things in the process of organization and then I have too many containers or not the right size containers. So definitely try and go through the process first and then take stock of what you actually have so that you can buy containers that fit what you have and the space you have to put it in. I think this also goes for furniture. So before you say to yourself like, oh, I want a bookcase in my living room, try going through your books first, seeing how many books you actually have and seeing if they actually do need their own space and container or bookshelf, or if there's existing furniture that you already have that could house your books. And speaking of furniture, my next tip is to buy more simple furniture. In many ways, this can sometimes be just like a personal preference of the style of furniture that you like, but to keep things organized, the less surface area you have and the less drawers you have, the less those places will be a magnet for clutter. So I think about a couple of specific examples in our house. So we have bedside tables that are literally just a stump. They have a small surface area and they don't have any drawers. I think that if we were to have drawers in our bedside table, we would find things to put in those drawers. But because we have this very simple piece of furniture that doesn't have that extra space to fill up, it's one less spot in our house that's cluttered. And we took that approach with a bunch of different surfaces in the house. So the table behind me, my living room table, for instance, we opted not to have a living room table that had like a bottom shelf or a pull out drawer in it. Honestly, because we don't really need to store anything in the living room table. And I know that 
But if we had that space, I would find things to put in it. So my next tip is to give everything a home. I mean everything. Every single thing you have has a place to be when it's not in use. I think of this mostly when I think of like everyday carry things, like so those things that you use when you leave the house and take with you. So things like a phone, wallet, keys, your sunglasses, a mask if you're still in a place where you need to wear a mask. All of those things need a place to be, a container, a home. So when you walk in the door, you don't just drop all that stuff on the floor or on the kitchen counter or on your mudroom table. So give those things a place to be, a home, somewhere where they are away, and that's really going to reduce the visual clutter in your house. All right, next up is to find a way to contain cords. This goes back sort of to that first point, but we all have so many cords, but once you declutter them, once you get them all in one space, also finding a way so that they can be folded neatly and untangled. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. I've seen a bunch of people do this by containing them inside old toilet paper rolls, which I think is a great and sustainable way to do it. I actually have these little cord wraps, they're rubber. I'll link them down below if I can remember where I got them and find them again. You can even reuse twist ties or use rubber bands. It doesn't have to be something specifically designed to contain cords, but this goes a long way in reducing the nightmare that can be our electronics. I'm actually not really like a label maker labeling kind of person, but if you're into labeling things, this could also be a good opportunity to put a little label on it, remind yourself what it is or what it goes to or what you use it for, especially if you have a high volume of cords that all look kind of similar. So this next one is a pretty popular thing to do, but honestly, game changer. File fold your clothing. So this became popular with Marie Kondo, the KonMari method, but file folding your clothing not only keeps it neater because you're not sifting through those stacks of clothes, but also it can just look a lot more visually pleasing. It's another way to have a good sense of your inventory. So things don't get buried at the bottom. When you pull out a drawer in your dresser, you can see everything. Honestly, when I think back to like my life pre-file fold method, I'm like, what was I even thinking? That was like such a nightmare. You know, you want like a shirt on the bottom, you have to like pick up all the shirts and like grab the shirt in the bottom and then try and put all the shirts back in. Like, why are we doing that? So the downside of this is I do think it takes a little bit longer until you get into the rhythm of file folding things, but I just think the payoff is so worth it. My next tip is to avoid stacking items. So the reason that I thought of this is when I was planning out this video and thinking about file folding, I was like, what made that so annoying was what I was just describing, right? Having to pick everything up and pull something out. And I was like, I also hate that in my kitchen, which is why I stopped stacking items in the kitchen. And this one is a little bit space dependent, but don't forget the more you declutter, the less you have, the more space you have, even if you have a smaller kitchen. So specifically, I'm thinking of like pots and pans. Not only does it create some visual clutter when you have to stack those on top of each other, but it also can just be a pain in the butt to get to something when you have to move three other pans in order to get it. Same thing with something like a cookie sheet. If they're all stacked on top of each other, it's hard to get to, it looks more visually cluttered. So I like to try and give things a little bit of space to breathe. And again, the less that you have, the more space you'll have for your items. I like to store my pots and pans in particular by themselves, not stacked, and with their own lid on top. This is gonna save you some time and effort trying to sift through all of your lids, trying to find the lid that fits as well. This is just one of those things that I feel like just made a really big difference in my kitchen. I'm no longer like super annoyed trying to dig through all my pots and pans. I literally just open the cabinet, grab it by the handle, the lid's already on it. It's just a whole lot easier. All right, my last and final tip is to do five minute maintenance. So if you just take five minutes every day to put things away, to make sure that things are in their home, in their place, that if things have gotten disheveled in drawers or whatever, that you put them back the way that you organized them originally, it's gonna go a long way in keeping your house organized. Organization is like a big one-time thing that can happen in your home, but it's also all of those everyday little things that you do. So every day when you come home, doing little things like putting your keys away, hanging up your coat, 
putting your shoes away, taking off your clothes and putting them either directly in the dirty clothes or hang them back up. If you notice you've put some cords away without wrapping them or whatever, taking an extra second to roll up your cord and wrap it when you put it away. It's those little steps that you take every single day that honestly doesn't have to take more than five minutes if you keep on top of it. That's gonna keep your home feeling more clean, clutter-free and organized. All right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. I put out new videos every Tuesday on minimalism, sustainable living, lifestyle, wellness, all that good stuff. So if you enjoy that, make sure you tune in each Tuesday and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone. Is this straight? I can never tell if it's straight. I think so. Okay, here we go. Too many things open. Um, don't look at me. Is that your I don't want to be in the video face? I'm hideous. You're beautiful. You have to play the video interruption tax. That's not the tax. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Oh, why couldn't I have done ten? Nine tips, I guess. Ah, no, I'm gonna run out of battery. Fudge. Start over. Three, two, one, go. Do any of us know what we're doing? Aren't we all just making it up as we go along? Ugh, spit it out. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say the whole thing. I'm not gonna mess up. <laughs>